Hello, my little flowers. Um, I want to take a moment just to discuss the brand new DJI Pocket 3 camera that I've been upgraded to thanks to my sponsor. Now, I have been using the DJI Pocket 2 for roughly the past two years, and I absolutely love this that camera so, so much. Totally fell in love with it. I love the compact design of the camera, the ease of use, and I mean just the overall like power the Pocket 2 has um, and just being able to go and like film with it and use it in all kinds of scenarios and not obstruct the views or you know kind of get in the way of people enjoying their day at like a theme park or whatever event I'm actually at. So I wanted to come on because I know there's like a billion videos out there about this DJI Pocket 3 camera and how really amazing it is. So this will be like a bazillion and one because when I kind of started doing research on this camera, on this upgrade from the Pocket 2 to the 3, I was really looking for some specific features that I really was hoping would be an upgrade you know, in purchasing this newer version of this camera uh, for my vlogging purposes. So I kind of scouted the internet and was looking, 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 and I found so much information from all these other videos that people had put out there that I really didn't get a definite answer on what I was looking for. So I figured I'd come on here really quick and kind of share my experience with this camera and also what I was looking for in this camera and what my results have been so far. So with all that being said, let's go. Mike the B, the music. So first I want to get into what comes with the DJI Pocket 3 Creator Combo. That's what I ended up getting just because it has everything I need. One, to get started if you're just starting on your blogging journey. And two, it just has a bunch of little tools that, I mean, you kind of want to have if you have this camera. So if you get the Creator Combo, this is what you get with it. You get the Osmo Pocket 3 uh, camera, of course. You get a Type-C to Type-C cable. You get the Osmo Pocket 3 protective cover. It's a hard case cover. You get a wrist strap which I use all the time, it's very handy. You get the Pocket 3 handle with a quarter inch thread. You're gonna need that because it also comes with a mini tripod. Um, you also get the Pocket 3 wide angle lens, which comes very, very uh, useful in certain uh, wide angle situations. You're in a tight space, you need a wider angle. This will give you just that extra couple inches you need to get that shot. Also, it comes with a DJI Mic 2 transmitter, which you have to have with the Pocket 3. The original mic does not work with the Pocket 3, so you have to get the DJI Mic 2 to work with the Pocket 3. Um, it also comes with a windscreen and a clip magnet, which I'm actually using right now. Um, and then it also comes with a Pocket 3 battery handle. Um, I love the battery handle because it's just enough extra juice that I need to get me through my vlogging day. And then it also comes with a little Osmo Pocket 3 carrying bag, which is a soft bag, which you can store all your stuff in. So I got the new camera and the whole combo and was just like Christmas morning. I opened everything, I had to look at everything, play with everything, see how everything kind of like went together and worked. So my sponsor did find a, another case. I believe he got it on Amazon. If I can find the link, I will link it in the description of this video. Um, it's a hard case and everything fits in it really, really nicely. There's even extra spaces for like uh, ND filters, you know, extra battery cables, like whatever. It's not really big, it's actually a good size. Um, everything, I do like it better than the case that comes with the actual Pocket 3, just because it is a little bigger. Everything fits in it nice and snug, and when you open the case, it's all there laid out in front of you, ready to go. The case that came with the Pocket 3, it is compact and everything does fit into it quite nicely so if you need a smaller case it is a good case to keep around just in case you need it this other hard case I like because it feels more secure it feels like it's actually gonna protect everything a lot more than the soft case that came with the pocket 3 so again if I find the link I'll link it in the description below 
Now, in my research and scouring the web for all these videos to kind of like find out all the ins and outs and things I need to do with my camera once I got it, I did see one blogger, and I don't remember who it was, but he had this special kind of smaller hard case that he got from like a third party um, for the Pocket 3. Now, this was perfect for me because I got into a habit of I'll have all my stuff in my bag. I usually bring a mini lounge fly bag with me whenever I'm out and about. And so I'll have the camera in my hand and I'll go to buy something or I have to go to the bathroom or whatever the case is. And so I just turn the camera off and I put it in my pocket, do what I gotta do, and then, you know, come out, take it out of my pocket and resume filming or whatever I'm doing. So he had this hard case and it covers the part of the actual lens of the camera and the screen, the big, beautiful new screen on the Pocket 3. So of course, I went straight to the link he had for this and I was all excited. Well, of course, I read reviews and a lot of people said that they liked the case, but the problem that they had was one, getting it open. So once you close it, they said it was like you had to pry it open. It was very temperamental because they were afraid that they were going to damage the camera in trying to pry this case open to get it out. Uh, the other thing I read about the reviews was that the plastic casing, uh, a lot of people had it where it actually scratched the, uh, the screen of the Pocket 3. So these are kind of two things that I was like, okay, hold on, maybe I don't want to get this. I mean, I do, but I, maybe I shouldn't. So I kept, you know, searching, searching, searching. And so what I found was something similar to the hard case, the plastic case, but it was silicone. So I did the same thing. It opens up, your, the top part of the Pocket 3 fits in there nice and snug. Uh, it holds and protects the lens and the screen. Uh, you put it in there, it's a nice soft silicone. Everything's in there nice and tight. You seal it up, put it in your pocket, do what you gotta do. As soon as you're done, you just reverse the operation. You kind of pop it back open. You pull out your camera and you're good to go. So. I'll look for that link too, and I'll also link it in the description of this video if you're interested in something like that, if you've purchased or are going to purchase a DJI Pocket 3. Now, I just have to say, I I'm gonna go ahead and say it, I just love the Pocket 3. I already was in love with the 2. Loved the 2, it was my, I just loved it. I was like, I don't need any other camera. I don't consider myself a, prof a professional. Like, I do this for fun, and I don't feel like I need, like, the super high quality anything. Like, I need it to be good enough. And I believe the Pocket 2 delivered way above my expectations, and that's why I just loved it that much. And it was my only camera, my only equipment I ever used. I don't have anything else. Before that, I used my cell phone. So, it was a big upgrade, it was amazing, and I just was like, yes, this is my camera. Um, so when they announced the Pocket 3 coming out, I got so excited because I was like, okay, usually when they announce like the next generation, it's better. There's there's upgrades, there's, there's things that are just like so much better. So I was very excited. I started doing some research, but not a whole lot because looking at the price point, it was a little bit more expensive than, you know, the Pocket 2 was. So I was like, okay, you know, is it gonna be in the budget? How long do I have to save for this? Blah, 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 the whole thing. So lucky for me, I have a sponsor. Uh, he's my partner. <laughs> and uh, he ended up getting me the uh, Pocket 3 combo package and uh, creator combo package. And I just, I mean, I'm so excited. I love this camera so, so much. It's so easy to use. It's compact. Like I said, it fits in my pocket. Like I have some accessories that fit in my bag. Like it's no, it's basically a no fuss camera that's like super, super powerful. Like more than what I feel like I need for what I'm trying to do. So that's my take already on the Pocket 3. So I took this camera out for a few test runs. Um, I spent some time in Islands of Adventure over at Universal Studios Florida. I spent some time uh, at 
Epcot the one day with some friends of mine who were in town and I was just trying to really get a good feel for the camera. I've been using it a little bit anyway, but I really wanted to do some really good test runs of some of the features of this camera. Now, one of the things I started to play with with the Pocket 2 were ND filters. Now, I'm not very knowledgeable on any of this stuff, so I'm just gonna kinda use the terms I know and just kinda tell you stuff from my personal experience of what I found out from using uh, different filters. Now, I did find a cheap uh, ND filter uh, pack on Amazon, and that's kind of the way I feel like you need to go if you've never used filters before, because that way you're not wasting a ton of money on filters, and you can kind of learn about them and get the, the feeling of them, the flow with them, um, before you decide to invest in like maybe more filters or more expensive filters. So my biggest uh, problem when I had the two was I would go film things like concerts. Uh, Epcot has some really good concerts and the lighting would be too much sometimes. So I would get like, you know, singers would be like whitewashed out or I don't know, just things would be too bright for the camera. And I would try to figure out like settings and you know, do all that stuff and I just wasn't getting it right. Um, luckily for me, I used Google and uh, it kept coming up to use ND filters. And I was like, okay, so I, like I said, I got a cheap uh, set to play around with. And I went to my first concert uh, and I put on the filter and the results were like night and day. It, it was so amazing. So for those of you who don't know what these ND filters are, it's basically like sunglasses for your camera. So it's gonna take, so like when you're outside and like the sun's really, really bright or whatever, and you put on the sunglasses and then you can see better. Well, that's basically what you're doing for your camera with these filters. Now the filters come in with different numbers and the numbers are like the different shades, the, you know, the different tints basically on these filters. So playing around with all that stuff, of course, I had to get filters for the Pocket 3. So again, my partner was gracious enough to uh, get a small pack of filters because again, I don't know a whole lot about them. I know certain numbers work and you know, for me, for what I need. So we did find a small pack that uh, seemed to have the numbers I needed for what I'm gonna do. I was at Alan's Adventure and they have this beautiful, beautiful lagoon in the middle that is, you know, all the islands that you visit are kind of surrounding this huge lagoon. So the day I was there, it was like a super sunny, clear day. So like, I guess picture perfect weather for, you know, most people. So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna set up here and I'm gonna do a test on these filters to hopefully I can see the difference. Um, and that was super, super bright. So I don't know how much of a difference it was gonna make, but I figured I'd try it anyway. So I basically set up my camera and I did, I tried to do the same shot. I don't know, I don't think I got it quite the same every single time, but I got it close enough. So of course I had the shot with no filters at all. And it's just this big, bright, beautiful, picturesque lagoon very very pretty um, and then I slide on the ND16 and now the ND16 is my go-to for like the concerts and stuff it seems to do just enough of a filter to give me the look I want but doesn't like make it too dark um, so I did the 16 first and then after the 16, I have an ND64, which seems to be the go-to for a lot of people that do like photography and stuff for super bright days. Um, again, I don't know how that would work in a concert setting. Maybe I'll give it a try sometime. Um, but yeah, so I have an ND64. And then the third uh, filter that I have was an ND256. Now the 256 is like the darkest, darkest I've ever been in my entire life on these filters so far. So, but I, you know, this is all for, to see how these filters work. So I put the 256 on last and hopefully you can see the difference and the change it makes to the actual video uh, between the 16, the 64, the 256 compared to the regular um, the regular shot without any filters whatsoever. I will say that I had another filter in this pack that I've never used before, and that was the CPL 
or the circular polarizing filter? What is that? I asked the same question, so again, I googled it and this is what I found out. So the CPL is a glass attachment that can reduce glare from reflected surfaces. CPL filters are commonly used in photography to remove unwanted reflections and enhance image contrast. They can also enhance colors, increase contrast, and reduce atmospheric haze. CPL filters are especially useful for, for photography that involves reflective surfaces like glass or water, such as landscape and travel photography. So I put the CPL filter on the camera and so it's a dial looking thing and so it has two lines that you line up and so I line up the two lines first. And then, so I kind of filmed that to kind of see what I would get from that on this super just gorgeous, gorgeous day. And then what I did is I did another one, but what I did is I took it I, and I turned it 180 degrees to see what that difference was. Because, you know, it does turn. And so that's supposed to, of course, give you some different uh, options as far as like what it's doing with the polarization of the shot. So I just did this just to show you the differences of the different filters and to kind of give you an idea. So if you haven't played with filters yet or, you know, we're thinking about it, hopefully this helps you a little bit you know on your journey you know doing research and looking for the right filter for your particular projects okay so really really quickly i can't stress this enough so if you have the dji pocket 2 and you're looking to get the pocket 3 you have to get everything all over again so the pocket 3 like the the lens is bigger than the pocket 2 was um a lot of the other pieces and parts do not they don't attach they don't you know they don't mix and match so you'll have to get like the battery pack you'll have to get the lenses you'll have to get cases like everything the microphone so the dji mic 2 which is what i have on right now um it connects to the pocket 3. it doesn't go the other way around so the the one the first uh mic does not connect to the pocket 3. so if you have that which i have that um, it's not going to work on the Pocket 3. So that's why I, I kind of think it's a really good idea that if you're thinking about getting the Pocket 3, save the coins and get the Creative Combo because it comes with all this stuff. It comes with the extra wide lens. It comes with all that stuff to get you started. And you know, it's kind of a better like bundled deal. You're getting all of it kind of right up front. Whereas you get just the camera and I think a few other things in the just the regular starter pack. And then you're spending more money than you probably would have, you know, if you would have got the combo pack. So keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase this camera in the future. All right, so on to what I was really looking for in this camera, at least upgrade wise. Like the big seller for me was low light. So I love to go to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Florida, you know, in the fall. I love it, it's just an event. I just, I just love all the Halloween, you know, spirit and just, just the event itself, I just love it. So I had my pocket two last year and I did take some video and I kind of learned some things about how to get better low light video with the Pocket 2 by having to go into manual mode and adjust some of the numbers that were, you know, there for the different things. And I got some okay footage. Like at the time, it was better than what I had gotten before. So I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm so glad I learned this. I'm getting better footage. I also have a pretty good um, editing program that I use that kind of helped me enhance the video that I had already gotten. The problem that I was seeing though is so I was getting what's called noise. And so sometimes if you see like the little like grainy bits or whatever, like especially in low light videos, that's called noise. Learned that myself. So um, with the Pocket 3, it comes with an automatic low light setting. Uh, not to mention, it also has like a greater number range for the uh, light setting on the camera. I went to these parks and I did some tests 
And thank God I have old footage to compare it to and you're not gonna believe the difference. It's, it's just amazing. So first I started Islands of Adventure over at Universal Orlando Resort. I went on the Skull Island Random Kong attraction. So back when I had the Pocket 2, the attraction was a 3D attraction. So it started with kind of some real world props and stuff and then it goes into the 3D. Um, and so I had used my tricks to get the, the numbers like adjusted and to get some pretty good footage with that. And then I got the Pocket 3 and I went on the ride again, which they took away the 3D element. You don't wear 3D glasses anymore, which I am so thankful for. But the difference is like night and day. I had it on the low light setting. I let the camera do all the work for me. I just sat back, I pointed, I chewed it, I enjoyed the attraction. And I'm just so, so excited and happy with the results this camera produces in low light setting. So another attraction that I went on while I was at Island Spider-Man attraction over in Marvel Superhero Island. It is still 3D. It's a really cool attraction. If you haven't been able to get over there or been to that park, I highly suggest it. It's a good ride. The same thing. I went on this attraction with the Pocket 2. Um, I felt like I got some really good footage and then I took the Pocket 3 and night and day like totally like just so much better was so happy i was really trying to get the part um where the goblin is throwing his uh exploding pumpkins at you and then there's like a little fire effect that happens to go from basically like kind of a dark situation to a, like a super light situation all at the same time and i believe that footage came out really really well some more examples because I just love that this feature is on here and just love what I'm, the results I'm getting from it. Over in Epcot, the Mexican Pavilion. This pavilion is very dark. Like there's light from the different little like kiosks and stuff. But to me, when I walk in, it's a very dark pavilion. So to go in there, low light setting, and then the result of the video, like how it lit up this pavilion, was just absolutely amazing to me. I was just blown away by the footage when I checked it later, like how good it really lit up this kind of darker pavilion. And moving on, we went to uh, the Frozen Ever After attraction over in Norway. And I had some really good footage from this one, but again, I didn't know how good this camera was going to be because again, it just really, really brightened up this attraction in the darker areas. Um, the only problem I, I think I had was, so because it is frozen, there are some, you know, it's ice, so you have a lot of white in some places. And then the animatronics used in this attraction, they have projected faces. And so that was kind of a problem using the uh, low light function because it took those and kind of like overdid them at some points, but then it did focus in and it did bring it back down. So again, it was still a better result than what I had, was getting with the Pocket 2. Um, and then of course to end our night, we did go do fireworks. So I was able to get some of the fireworks show. Uh, we didn't really have the, the best view of the fireworks, but I did get a little bit of the fireworks show just to see um, what, it, how it would react to, you know, the fireworks. Cause fireworks, you know, it's dark. And then all of a sudden it's just this huge burst of like extreme light. So I really wanted to get that and uh, give that a good test to see you know, what it was gonna pull and what type of result I was gonna end up getting. So one more thing I wanna talk about is, so at Epcot, it's a Flower and Garden Festival, and the very, very front of the park, the entrance to the park, you come upon the Wish Topiary. It's Asha and Valentino. So at night, it lights up. And so of course, I'm exiting the way I came in, and I thought, oh my God, I wonder how good it looks at night. And then with this camera and these settings, I mean, how much better could it look, right? So I kept it on the night sight uh, setting and I was filming the, you know, the topiary and the spaceship Earth is in the back. It's sort of like Christmas tree. It was all in white. So I'm getting extreme light coming at me and I have it on night sight. So of course my first thought was, this is gonna be so washed out. Like I'm not gonna be able to see anything or you're not gonna really make it out that well. It's not gonna be a good shot. 
So I took, you know, a few seconds of that just to kind of, so I could get the comparison. And then I took it off a of night sight to see what the difference was and how much darker it got or lighter or whatever the case was. And the difference was really, really like crazy because it got really dark and then I was trying to hit the screen and so I could get it to kind of focus in on certain areas to maybe lighten up on its own or focus on its own. And my conclusion, my experience, um, it was actually better just to leave it on night sight and let that do its magic because when I turned it to the regular uh, setting, it was too dark. And then when I tried to basically play with it to get it to focus on something else to lighten up, it like, it just, it was just, to me it was off. So this camera, like night sight, when it's dark, is kind of the way to go in most settings. Well guys, that's kind of it. I just wanted to do this really, really quick because like I said, when I was researching for this camera, there was uh, like the night sight stuff I was really looking for. This camera has so many other features. There's so many other videos out there talking about them. You can Google them, you can look them up on YouTube, whatever. If you're really interested, they're out there. I'm telling you, I've seen them. But this is my video. I want to give you kind of my personal take on the camera also because I just find it to be amazing. I love it. It's my, it's my new vlogging camera and I'm definitely gonna be using it more and more uh, in the future. I've already used it on a few other projects that I've already put out that hopefully you've watched and you've enjoyed. But other than that, thank you so much for following along on my little adventures. And as always, I am Mike the Bee. You never know where I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna be UV2. I'll see you guys later. Bye.